We are going to talk with Fuston McCarty and Ethel Hicks Stores, and they're going to tell us about early dye mule shoe and by the county area. And Ethel lived on the old mule shoe ranch, and she has a letter from the owner of the ranch, E.K. Warren, dated May the 13th, 1925, to her father, Mr. A.J. Hicks, Mule Shoe, Texas. No, no zip code and no address, and it got to him fine. And it says, Dear Friend Andy, I'm in receipt of yours of May 6th. And note that the paint will be dry in your home June the 1st. That would have been in the old Mule Shoe Ranch house. I expect to be in Mule Shoe about the 1st, so there is no reason why I should not witness your wedding. I note you have changed your plans and do not want a regular cook stove or range, but want an oil stove. There are so many different kinds of oil stoves that Mrs. Hicks might want that I'm going to leave it up to her to buy an oil stove and I will pay for it rather than ship something from here that will not suit. Of course, here meant Three Oaks, Michigan, where E.K. Warren lived. Now tell her to order just, and he underlines, just the kind of an oil stove she wants and tell her it will be my pleasure to pay for the same. What with kind regards, I remain very truly yours, E.K. Warren, and it's on the E.K. Warren and Son Stationery with E.K. Warren's signature. And Jack Hicks always told me that E.K. Warren was a very benevolent man, and he gave land to the Catholic Church and the Methodist Church. And he uh, gave the bell in the Methodist Church that still is in the Tower of the Methodist Church in Milshew to the residents of Milshew. He provided the Boy Scout ground and also the Old City Park land. And um, also, this is a picture of Mr. and Mrs. Andrew Jackson Hicks. And, of course, the um, letter was written to Mr. Hicks before his marriage. This was made in March of 1925. And this is February the 24th, 2012. And we are visiting with two people who now live in Lubbock and have for many years, but their roots run very deep in Muleshoe and Bailey County. On my left is Ethel Hicks Stores, who was reared on the old Muleshoe Ranch, and on my right is Fuston McCarty. Fuston, were you reared? Yes. You yeah. were reared. <laughs> and his parents were Ruth and Delma McCarty. Now, I remember your father, uh, Fuston, being at the post office. Yes, that's correct. Yes. And your mother didn't work outside the home, did she? Well, in... Uh, um while we were in school and college, she did, yes. Did she? Where yeah. did she work? Well, it, um, I'll have to think about it. Well, that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> On Main Street? Well, for for the Bass uh, Furniture Store. Okay, Harvey Bass okay. Appliance. Okay, and yeah. For Johnson Poole. Johnson Poole, Randy Johnson. And, yeah. uh, okay, very good. Now, uh, she was a Harden, wasn't she? Yes. She was a Harden. And your mother, Ethel, was a Jesco, right? My mother was a Jesco. Uh -huh. And what was her name? Cecilia Eva. Yeah. Jesco Hicks. Hicks. And what was your daddy's name? Andrew Jackson Hicks. And what did your daddy do? He was the performer of the ranch. Of the mule shoe ranch. Prior to that, he was the windmiller for that ranch. And so they had a lot of windmills, didn't they? They had a lot of windmills. And he kept them in operation, right? That was his job. Now, did your mother work outside the home? No. No. Now, um... What year did you start to school, Fuston? 1937, I believe. 
and Milshu. Yes. And uh, was he in your class, uh, Ethel? Oh, yeah. You all were in the same class. And we have a picture here of their first grade class, and it was in Milshu. And now, was this the uh, location where uh, Mary DeShazo Elementary School is today? Well, it's the old um, grade school. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DeShazo building was built later. Right. But that's the location. Yes. Uh-huh. Now, uh, we've got to find out where you are in this picture. So we have uh, pulled out pictures of all of the students from that picture who went all 11 grades to school in Milshu. Now, 11 grades because in those days, there were only first through the 11th grade. 11th was the top grade, not the 12th. And there was no pre-K or kindergarten at that time. Now, Fuston, which one is you? In this picture here? Yes, uh uh-huh. I'm down on the lower You're corner. Right there on the bottom. Yeah. And that is you in the first grade. In the first grade. And you graduated what year? 1947. 47. And the building that you graduated from, Ethel, was the old, old Milshu High School two story building, or was it three story? It was a two story building uh-huh. and the gymnasium. And it, it uh, was there on the fifth street and it looked west right no that building that we were in was on the east side of that two- well i mean where you graduate from high school yes okay. high school but this was on the east side on probably uh west third yes and it looked east now ethel which one is you that is the, the, this is ethel I wouldn't know either one of you. (laughs) And Herb Griffiths, who lived in Milshu many, many years, his wife Jane is still alive and lives in Milshu, is right across from uh, Ethel. Now, who are the other ones in the picture? This is Dick Taylor. And Jane Dameron. And Jane Dameron is Jane Reese. Is Jane still alive? Yes, she is. In Odessa? Odessa. In Odessa, Ms. Jim Reese. And, of course, Sam Dameron uh, is her brother, and he now lives here in Lubbock. And she had a sister. um, Help me. Billy Joanne. Billy Joanne Smith, Miss John Smith, and John lives here in Lubbock also. Now, down at the bottom is uh, Fuston, and then the girl is who? Fuston. Virginia Nelson. Oh, that's your relative, isn't yeah, it? She's, yeah. a, she's a cousin. Yeah. Virginia, uh, Virginia was Nelson. your first cousin. Actually, second cousin. Second cousin. My mother's first cousin. Your mother's first cousin. Okay. Your, oh, of course. Yes. Okay. Ruth McCar- uh, Ruth Harden McCarty's first cousin, Virginia. Now, Virginia was Hazel Gilbreth's sister. sister. That's right. Sister. And, and uh, they had another sister. Uh, Betty Burkhead. Betty uh, Harden. Uh, was it uh, Nelson uh, Burkhead. And, and Burkhead? And their, their mother was Pink, wasn't she? Yes, Pink. Uh-huh. And what was their daddy's name? George. George. George Nelson. Okay, that picture was from 1937 in Milshu. Uh huh. It tells you right there. Isn't that great? That is wonderful that you have those pictures. Now, um, are are there any other students in the larger picture that people would know? Can you think? Johnny Sid. Okay, Johnny Sid. Now, is that John Sid's son, Johnny? Um, I can't. John Sid, that would be our age. I don't know. Okay, yeah, well, it, I'm not aware. okay, but it's okay. It's John Sid who worked for the city of Milshu's son, Johnny. Yeah. Okay. And uh, anybody else that we would know? He's all dressed up to go to church, it looks like to me. <laughs> Jack DeShazo. Jack DeShazo. Where is Jack? Right here. Okay. He's now, by the teacher. Our school teacher was Mrs. 
Wasn't that Ms. Cox? No. And I looked for my report cards that I couldn't find it, but I will. Well, okay. Fowler. Her name was Fowler. Miss Fowler. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Fowler was the teacher. And this is Jack DeShazo. Now, Mary DeShazo Elementary School is named for his mother. And she was a teacher for many years in the elementary schools of Milshoe. Now, Jack has a sister, Nell. Does that That's right? correct. And yeah. another brother. Dick. Dick. And was that all? Were there any other children in that? Not that I remember. I think their daddy's name was Jinx DeShazo. Does right. that, that yeah. right? Okay. I, I remember Jinx real well. He, 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 he was really. Now, anybody else in the picture besides uh, who we pointed out? Now, is this you in the little bow tie? No, no. Oh, you're right in the middle, right in the middle of the entire picture of 1937 uh, is Fuston McCarty. Actually, the year we started the school was 1936. This, sure. this was March of 37 when this mm -hmm. picture was made. Anybody else that you all see that we should mention or that you remember? This was Bernie Biller. That's Billy Holt. That's one of the broils that live out at Sword YL. I don't remember what his name was. And Okay, this is a broils right down here. We think. We think. <laughs> oh, that's good enough. Hey, and, man, were you reaching back just a ways? A little, a couple of days ago. And now right here is who? Bernie Beller. Bernie Beller is right here. Now, is that uh, the Beller's relatives, uh, Jinx Beller's relatives, or do you know? I, I, I can't say. I don't know. You know, uh, he, well, Mr. Beller was married to a Schaffner. And then wh what's the other one you remember? That's Billy Holt. Billy Holt. Now, Billy Holt is right here on the end in the coveralls. Isn't that cute? <laughs> well, uh, that is a couple of days ago, isn't it? Almost. Uh, almost a couple of days ago. Well, now let's go back in uh, the history of your families. Your grandparents were uh, Miss Ms. I.W. Harden? Yes, that's correct. And I have a picture there. Oh, wonderful. Um, I remember... Do I remember both of them or one of them? Well, I, I remember Miss Harden for sure. She, yes, they were. Um, they were married somewhere around uh, 1900. Uh -huh. This picture was made of at their wedding, and if you look real closely, it's a photographer from Roth. Indian Territory, Oklahoma. Oh, how wonderful. And they lived in, at that time, in uh, Petrolia, where my mother was born. Right. Okay. Now, um, Indian Territory, that just meant that that was before Oklahoma actually became a state in the United States of America. And this is Ms. Ms. I.W. Harden. Now, what was Ms. Harden's maiden name? Beecham. Beecham. Mm -hmm. And what was her first name? Sarah Jane. Sarah Jane. I just called her Miss Harden. And um, now, how many children did they have? Five. Five. And who? My grandfather had, um, and his first wife had three children, um, Mary and uh, Good and Elizabeth Harden. Of course, Elizabeth mm -hmm. lived in, in Muleshoe, and then my, then... Their mother passed away, and he married my grandmother, Sarah Jane Beecham, uh -huh. and to that union was born my mother and Iris Butts. Uh -huh. Now, I uh, moved to uh, Bailey County in 1917. Elizabeth Harden, I think, was uh, a secretary to the judge, and then she went to the First United Methodist Church, which was only known as First Methodist Church, and was secretary there many, many, many years. And she ran the church. Oh, 
Probably. <laughs> <laughs> you better believe it. Oh, I remember Elizabeth. And, of course, I remember your mother, Ruth, and Iris. Iris and her husband, Buford Butts, um, moved then to Fort Collins, Colorado, in probably the late 50s. Does that sound right? That's, that's right. And they're both buried there in Milshu, Iris and um, Buford. And Good Harden. Uh, what did he down on the coast? Is that where he? He did? they moved to uh, Port Natchez sometime in the early part of World War II. He worked for the B.F. Goodrich rubber plant. Now, so when did the Hardens come to Milshu in Bailey County? 1917. 1917. Why did they come, Houston? It was uh, he was engaged in farming in uh, North Texas and. Uh, that was in the early years of irrigation, and irrigation brought a lot of families from from Oklahoma and Texas to the west western part mm-hmm. for irrigated uh, farming. Right. Uh-huh. And so, um, Mr. Harden died what year? Uh, 1938. 38. And Ms. Harden, when did she die? I can't give you a date, but uh, sometime in the early 60s. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, they were very prominent in our community and uh, real, real pioneers. Now, what about your family? Uh, uh, the Jesco's, uh, were they there before God came? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Almost. Uh, uh, we, wh- wh- your mother, wh- who were her parents? Stephen and Martha Jesco. And so where did she grow up? Well, she was born in Michigan City, Indiana. Uh-huh. And she came to north of Muleshoe in 1903, I think. 1903. About that. And uh-huh. they came on a, I've heard this story, they came in a cattle car that part of it was people and part of it was their cattle uh-huh. and that's the way they got down here from michigan and that was real uh, and that uh, and that was very common I the for the mill shoe area people to come that way i think that was the uh-huh. way they got there uh-huh. and of course as you go north of mule shoe on 214 uh-huh. where the road makes that curve or yes. what it used to uh-huh. that Right there was where the old Jesco homestead was. Really? Uh Uh-huh. And the Jesco school was right east of that. Uh Uh-huh. And the Jesco school uh, combined with the some school, and it became the Midway School, and it was west of where the Jesco community is out there. There's a Jesco under every tree out there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and and the Jescos were all Catholics, weren't they? Yes. And now, were, was there a Catholic church, though, in anywhere nearby at that time when they came? No, the priest came to Grandma Jesco's house occasionally. Uh-huh. On the Sundays that he didn't come, I have the book that he read the or that someone in the family read the sermon for that Sunday out of. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, how neat. Now, tell me, um, how many brothers and sisters did your mother have? Gosh, there was 12 kids in that family. Uh Yeah. And uh, now, from that family, there's a few Jesco's still left at Lasbury area, don't you think? No. No, there's I not. Think there is a lot left. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. And uh, now the Hicks family. Your your father. How did he come, and when did he come? He came from Alabama, and he sort of wandered around the countryside. And I've forgotten exactly what year he said he came. Uh-huh. About seventeen, I think. And he was working on various ranches uh-huh. as a windmiller. Uh-huh. And then he came on out and 
it's in part of that history over there that would be easier to read and get more correct than I can remember. The to Bailey do. County History book. Yeah. That was mm-hmm. in the newspaper. Well, it, it's printed it's in a printed. book. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, your mother and daddy, how did they meet, or do you know? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, mother was a soda jerk at Fuston's father's drugstore. Is that right? Fuston's uncle's yeah. drugstore. Now, what was the uncle's name? Fuston? Arthur. Arthur it McCarty. The old, uh, the old Western drug. The old Western drug. Okay. There on the corner with the hotel above it, my grandfather built those two buildings. On Main Street. On Main Street. And um, that would be in the 200 block, right? I can't tell you about yeah, that. that. That's right, though. I know, I, I know where the hotel we was. go by streets. They'd be <laughs> sure we knew where they were. But uh, sh- Daddy and Mother met there uh-huh. and then married in 1925 in mill shoe yes in mill shoe yes and how many children did they have four and who were the children jack mm-hmm. he was born in 1925 alice and alfred twins born in 1926 and then i was born in 1929 uh-huh Alfred lived at Lansbury, and yes. Alice uh, then moved later uh, to uh, Clovis. Clovis. Right? And then where did she live when she died? Irving. Irving. And and she married who? Medford Cyphers. And, of course, Jack married uh, Maddie Hicks and then... Um, Maddie Hogan. Ma- Maddie Hogan. <laughs> so, thank you. And, and uh, then uh, Alfred married Peggy... Peggy Fly, Fly from Farwell. Okay. Okay, we got to the twins. Now, when were you born? Uh, 29. And and you married whom? Lord Stores. And he was a medical doctor. True. Uh-huh. A specialist, right? Specialist, ear, nose, and throat. In Lubbock. In Lubbock. In Lubbock. Okay, now, your daddy, tell me how he got to Milshu. Uh He was uh, Delmer McCarty. Well, my grandfather, uh, A.V. McCarty, and my grandmother, Kate, moved to Muleshoe in about 1925 or 26. Um, and my mother and daddy married in 1927. Mm-hmm. While I guess mother may, may have finished high school, or she, I'm not sure about that, but then I was born in uh, December of 29. Mm-hmm. And you had a brother, didn't you? Yes, my younger brother, two years younger. Both of us finished at Texas A and M. He was a fighter pilot, and was killed in a mid-air collision in England in 1956. I remember like it was um, really yesterday. His uh, graveside service. It was. Uh, very emotional, yes. very uh, patriotic. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Ethel, how big was the Milshu Ranch? 40,000 acres. And now, you said your daddy was the windmiller. Tell me exactly, what did the windmiller do? The windmill man was the aristocratic man of the whole bunch. He got an extra $10 <laughs> In his paycheck because he was he got more than the cowboys did because they thought they needed him to keep the windmills running and uh, what he did was he would take his wagon with his team his bedroll and he'd go out and sometimes stay for a week or two really going from the west part of that ranch going east Uh until he had all the windmills especially in springtime they took all the windmills somewhat apart cleaned all the parts got all the dirt out of them put the oil in them and put them back Mm. all of the windmills up in the top of the tower had a bottle of windmill oil and if the cowboy was riding by and a windmill was squeaking 
he yeah. got off, he put oil on the windmill. Uh-huh. But Daddy was the one who was responsible for keeping all of them. If something the cowboys couldn't do, Daddy was the one who went out and fixed the windmills. Also, if he needed to erect a new windmill, if they dug a hole and they needed a new windmill, he was the one who built the towers. Mm-hmm. And, of course, when us kids got a little bit older, we helped him. He'd saw all the stuff, and he'd tell us kids. He'd, he would set the frame, mm-hmm. and then he'd let us kids, and he did not want any elephant tracks. He wanted us to hit the nail <laughs> on the head so that we were not beating up the lumber with when, yeah. we, when we missed the uh, nail. He's pretty particular about that. He did his own cooking while he was gone for that long. Well, he had to or starve, yeah, right? He said he had to or starve. Uh-huh. So was he a good cook? Yeah, he could cook. Uh-huh. He could cook. Now, I'll, in this time, where did your family live on the Milshu Ranch? We lived at the headquarters, in the, ha- in the big house at the headquarters. And where was that located? Four miles west of Muleshoe. And it would be what, now t- uh, correct me, Cockawatty Road, which is the road to Portalis, 1760, right off of that. Correct. Okay. It was right south now, of that. at the Muleshoe Heritage Foundation is the Muleshoe Ranch Cookhouse, not the ranch house, the cookhouse. And it was located right there nearby, the they ranch were house. right together. They were... Mm-hmm. Uh, less than a half a block apart mm-hmm. and uh, the cowboys ate and lived in the cookhouse it was sort of like the bunkhouse in it a way. was the bunkhouse mm-hmm. we lived in the big house mm-hmm. now the ranch was wa- owned by E.K. Warren E.K. Warren never lived in Milshoe, but his life is so interesting. How did he make his big money? By the, they had the Warren Featherbone Company in Three Oaks, Michigan. They built st- uh, the staves for corsets and also buggy whips. Now, we have to stop and talk about corsets. You want to explain a car seat? No. <laughs> I've seen them, but I <laughs> Well, I know a lot about a car seat because my mother and my grandmother would have never walked out of the house without a car seat on. And my mother died in 64. And this was that she wore Goddard car seats. Uh, oh my yes. Yeah, you know, you bought them at Hempel Wells, Houston, <laughs> and uh, you couldn't buy them just everywhere or a, a, a Goddard car seat. But it would hit you from about here. Do you think? Yes. Does that and down to here? Well, let's see. Uh, below the bust, uh, around the waist, that's a good, a, a little bit higher than the waist. And the, the car seat would hold you in and hold you up. And my mother had muscular dystrophy, so it was really important to her. You can understand that because it helped her in her posture. And um, uh, there was no pant to it. You know, it had, uh, what did you call them that hung down? Uh, uh Garters. Garter, yeah, that were attached. You couldn't untatch them. And then your hose came up and connected to the garter. And, uh, oh, I mean, really, in tr- oh, I'll tell you someone else that wore a, a car seat in her younger days, not in a l- later day, was Mrs. W.F. Birdsong, Dr. Birdsong's wife. And, boy, you could tell when Polly Birdsong had her car seat on she had the neatest figure slender if she didn't have that on <laughs> it was a different story but i mean they were important 
and uh, the days of way back, you know, to I don't even know when, all of the 20th century, don't you imagine? Oh, sure. Mm-hmm. And Do you remember if your mother wore a... You don't remember? I don't think so. You, you weren't in that? <laughs> Not in my recollection. Uh-huh. Well, I would bet that she did. I think everybody when, did. Didn't when she was younger, I bet she did. You know, because every young lady wore a car seat. Uh, and and we're talking about a real car seat. <laughs> not, yes, a real not, not a girdle. There's a difference. Okay, so he made his millions that way. But there was another part of his uh, uh, industry. What did they do? Buggy whips. Buggy whips. Uh huh. Now, uh, did you ever see E.K. Warren? No. Never saw no. E.K. Warren. Did you ever see Mr. Warren? I did not see the original E.K. Warren, uh-huh. but the sons, Charles, uh-huh. E.K. Jr., we saw them frequently. And when they divided the estate, there was Charles Wilson and uh, Mr. Lackey and Mr. Kramer, they all would come down. Mm-hmm. We, from, we Michigan. All from Michigan. From Michigan. Uh-huh. So. Was it good uh, growing up on the ranch? Oh, yeah. Fun. Fun. Uh-huh. And now, were you a city kid always? No. We, no. we lived on the farm two miles north. Two miles north of Milshu on the farm. My grandfather built the adobe house that my mother and my aunt iris both were raised in that house and we then we subsequently lived on that farm when weldon and i were growing up really and so now i bet it's not there anymore the no house. it's there it's oh is it yeah pete uh, uh i've heard his name he bought the the uh, site where the house is and then bricked it it's a beautiful home now. And it's two miles north of Milshu. Yeah, on, the, on the Friona Highway. On, on the Friona Highway. Yeah. Okay, we'll have to go out and look. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful yeah. place. It's a pretty house. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And so growing up in Milshu in uh, the 30s, what was it like? Uh, did you have uh, much to do? Well, of course, I grew up in the 40s. When I, in the 30s, I was too young to remember. Well, that's right. That's true. 37, you started. Yeah. Yeah, 40s. So the, what did you do in the 40s? Solid work on, a, on the farm. You, you helped your yeah. parents. Yes. We, Weldon and I both worked on the farm all of our young life. Uh-huh. And so what kind of chores did you have that you did? Cattle and uh, we did. We had uh, custom mowing and baling, mm-hmm. alfalfa uh-huh. work, and uh, also yes, row crop. I farm. was. Um, I began in employment at the Lubbock National Bank in 1961. 1961. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And subsequently was in a number of different banks, but came back to Lubbock and. Uh, was re-employed at Lubbock National Bank and later in 1988 uh, came with the the group that bought the Plains National Bank and later with Plains Capital Bank and I retired there in in 2000. In 2000. Now um, well one thing we didn't talk about and we did on Ethel who did you marry? Billy Ruth uh, Little, she, her parents were Ruth and Brack Little, and they had a, a um, department store in Littlefield. Mm-hmm. She, she was raised in primarily in Leveland, but they bought a store in Le- Littlefield when she was a sophomore in high school. They moved to Littlefield. And she How did you meet her? We met on a blind date. Uh, a friend of hers introduced us because she was dating a, uh, a boy in Muleshoe. I see. Well, uh, now, Ethel, 
uh, tell me about uh, what you remember about Milshoe in the 40s and 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 uh, us uh, specifically uh, maybe um, what the town looked like in your mind's eye today back in the 40s it was a one-way street it had a as Houston said it had a movie theater it had a drug store it had a grocery store and it had a bank now who ran the grocery store Wagnons the Wagnon family well, they did before Wagner, didn't they? Heathington. After. After. Okay. I, um, um, I, I used to know that. That weren't they related to the Wagnons, the Heathingtons, or not? I, I don't know. the The old Wagnon grocery store was right next door to Dameron's Drug. Jeanette Wagnon's aunt was Miss Heathington. I don't know that. No. Uh, that that's where I got the relationship. So, um, uh, so uh, the the grocery store was located where? In that same block where Western Drug. Okay. Well, they were long. The block, then, it was today. toward the south side of the, uh, in the middle of the block, and Dameron Drug later was right next door, I think, to the Wagnons. You talked about the hotel. Uh, I think a hotel in that those days was important to a little community. Do you remember who ran the hotel? I guess my aunt uh, and uncle, Arthur and Dora McCarty, uh -huh. in they the were, early days. In the early, early days, uh-huh. And then the, later, was there a Mrs. Yarbra that ran it? Now was but why before that did was M P Smith the mercantile dealer why why before perhaps so that okay. name I I recall that name I, th I think he was in the real pioneer pioneer days uh, the the owner of the mercantile store where you bought everything did your mother make your clothes oh yeah. Uh -huh. Did your mother make uh, clothes? A lot of them, yes. Of them Most of them. Clothes. Most. You of didn't them. go to town and buy. Uh, uh, she didn't make overalls. <laughs> she didn't make overalls. Well, do you know where she bought them? I don't know. Uh, where Where do you think? Can you remember a store that would have sold? No, no I don't. In later years, the St. Clair's had sure. their store, uh -huh. and. Um, I don't know who preceded him, though, but because Mr. St. Clair was there when I was real young. And now that's Lowell Irving and Bill Jim's father. Uh, Irving. Mm -hmm. Irving St. Clair, not Lowell Irving, Irving. We came to Lubbock fairly often because Did of my you? earaches, and we went to Levine's and yes. Penny's. Uh -huh. but I on Broadway. On Broadway. Uh -huh, yeah. I don't really remember what we bought. Uh huh. Now, what about groceries? Did you grow a lot of your food in those years? Oh yeah. Uh huh. So you didn't buy like we do today at the grocery store everything. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Mother had a garden. We had our beef. We had a pig. We had chickens. Uh. We raised everything. In school, do you remember uh, some of the teachers or the students she went, besides the ones we've talked about, that you went to school with? Oh, yes. I Who were some of the teachers? Well, uh, Jerry Kirk and, and his wife were both high school teachers, and he was a coach, at came basketball coach after the war, uh -huh. and... Um, I can't recall her given name. What's Jean uh, Juanita. 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 And what about uh, were you the mules or the yellow jackets? Yellow jackets. Then the me the mule name came after we finished high school. And, and was it okay with you that they changed the name? Didn't make any difference to me. That's good. No, it was that's. <laughs> Whatever they did was okay with me, yeah. Do you remember some teachers or anything about uh, school in Milshoe? 
Well, we had Ms. Chazo and Mrs. Cox. We had uh, Mr. McGuire. Mr. McGuire in high school. Uh -huh. And uh, Mr. Windsor. Bowman. Bowman. Uh, We all thank you. Tiller <laughs> and Brown. <laughs> and and what what about uh, how you dressed when you went to school? Did the girls wear uh, slacks or blue jeans or? Do you remember? I don't remember really. Do you remember? Did you wear pants to school? I did, uh, did? Uh -huh. and some of the girls did. Mostly, it was. Uh, Skirts and sweaters, skirts and blouses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing and, like we do today, but. And graduation, do you remember anything about graduation at all? Either one of you? Oh, sure. Where We're, was it? Graduation was in the gym. In the gym. Yeah. Now, is that the gym that's still standing today? Oh, no. That's right. a, in a building that's been demolished. I see, okay. The old high school building. Uh -huh. See, uh, the new high school was built just about the time in 48 or 49. I think Weldon was in one of the first classes in the, in the new high school. I know in the football. Our football was out there on the north side of town on a piece of scratched out. <laughs> well, I was told it was called Cobb Field. That's probably right. Across the railroad track. Yes, right. that's okay. right. Okay. Anything that you remember about graduation? No. Not, not anything. And, Just uh, the excitement of having it over <laughs> and being out of school uh -huh. and then wondering what are you going to do now. Did you have telephones? Oh, yes. We had a telephone. Did, you had a telephone. Did you all have a telephone? Yes. Oh. Yeah, it was a party line. How many on a party? There was probably four or five. I remember our, it was a wall type crank. Was it? Uh -huh. And I remember our phone number was 900F22. <laughs> 900F22. It was, it was two longs and two shorts. Oh, and That's so the ring. the ring, two longs and two short, meant that the McCarty's should answer it. Now, right. there would be another type of ring for the other people on the party line. And if you picked it up, you could hear what the other people were saying on your party line. <laughs> uh, Daddy put up the line himself so we had a private line oh you did at, to the ranch oh you were uptown <laughs> you bet <laughs> but he put in his own line yes i understand well this has been fun reminiscing with two people who live in lubbock and have for many years but their roots are very deep in milshoe and bailey county and our area they are Ethel Hicks Stores, who was actually reared on the Muleshoe Ranch. And, of course, the Muleshoe Ranch was carved out of the XIT, the world's largest ranch, and then also Fuston McCarty. And thank you both. We're visiting here in the home in Lubbock of Mr. and Mrs. Fuston McCarty. Thank you for having me so much. We thank you, too. You're welcome.